All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. And today, as you guys uh, wanted to see this, I want to explore a bit of GitHub Actions. So the building XWithJS group finally got access to them. As you can see right here, we have the Action tab. And um, yeah, so GitHub Actions is the new CI CD automation workflow, as they describe it, because it's really far more than just CI CD. Tightly integrated with the GitHub itself and well provided by the GitHub itself, they do offer quite a ton of things. And uh, today we're going to have a look at it, uh, what it is, how to use it and what can you actually do uh, with GitHub Actions uh, that might be easier or better than what you could do with the CI. I, I, I mean, I imagine majority of things are actually pretty much the same as what you could do with something like Travis, right? But there are a couple of interesting things, uh, including the custom actions. This is something that CI services typically do not offer that uh, GitHub offers over them. And the additional thing is that since it's tightly integrated with a GitHub, you don't actually need to care about, you know, providing tokens to the repo and stuff like this. It just works out of the box, which is nice. They're also really generous for um, in terms of time. So you get like 2000 minutes per month for your private repos and all the public repos are basically free forever as it usually happens with open source stuff. You can also self host the CI runner, which is uh, pretty damn nice. But uh, yeah, so the idea for today's stream is that we're gonna take the BXS website, we're gonna migrate from, uh, I think we're currently using Travis here, yep. So we're gonna migrate from Travis and we're gonna use it uh, in GitHub Actions. And this is basically it. It also, we have the potential vulnerability, whatever that is here, probably something, uh, yeah, that seems like it's something to be in a de like dependency, the, the dev dependencies, but we're gonna see that in a second and maybe update the depths to make sure that everything runs nicely. So I guess um, let us start with, um, yeah, so I, I cloned the repo and I guess let's start with just basically migrating the same thing from Travis and doing it in uh, GitHub Actions, right? So what we do in Travis is uh, super simple. So there's no current script command, but what Travis does by default is npm test, which I believe we don't actually have here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, we don't have tests, so we don't actually need to run that. Uh, before install, we install exaframe. You no longer need to do that because you can just run deployment with it. And this is really what we want to run. So we need the exaframe token and we only need to run that on master branch. And this is the token encrypted in Travis. But I believe the GitHub actions have a different way of doing things. So I guess uh, let's just get started with it. So I'm going to keep the Travis YAML open over here. Right. And as far as I know, the GitHub actions actually gives a nice way of doing that uh, right here. Uh, Hey Ron, welcome to the stream. All right, um, yeah, so you, they've recently added this page, by the way, it wasn't here on the previous beta. And it's really nice to have those sort of pre-configured workflows for, for you that you typically have um, sort of, you know, the most common use cases, npm install, npm build, npm tests, and, you know, npm publish for the packages. We, I guess we could just go with install test and then fork off of that. Class in eight minutes. Oh, I see. Well, I mean, you can always watch the VOD on the YouTube as usual. You know, that's not a big problem, I think, <laughs> thankfully. But okay, so let's go off the uh, basic workflow here. Uh, Node.js YAML, let's call it deploy YAML. And it's going to be, let's rename it to deploy with exoframe, right? And it's going to be a happen on push. We actually want to do on push, but we also want to do it only on master. Um, sure, on uh, good luck with your classes. See you around. All right, so I think there's basically there's the guideline configuring workflows. There was a file that had everything you need to know about. Um, okay, so let me just open this somewhere on the side because there's the building actions, and if we have enough time, we're going to try and build our own actions. So workflow syntax is what I want, right? So we got this on thing and we got an on push and pull request. And okay, push, and this is how we define branches. Can I say both on pull and push and branches? Doesn't seem 
Yeah, one of the coolest thing about the GitHub Actions is that um, instead of just running it, you know, on push and pull on a custom event as you typically have in CI, you actually have a way to schedule it with cron. So you can have a recurring action that runs every X minutes, hours, days and does something, which is, I don't think I've ever seen any CI do that. So you typically have to have your own solution that does this, uh, at least, you know, from my experience of, of working with the CI systems. Um, unless you self host. But even then, you know, like just having this is pretty damn fantastic. But okay, let us uh, just say we're gonna go on push and we're gonna go branches master, right? Because this is, uh, this is the wrong thing. So this is what I want. And then uh, we're gonna say the same for, um, can I do push branches and, and then just do pull request? Push, let me see events to trigger workflow. How do I combine that? Here's the question on push on push pull request pull request types. Yeah, they also have this very refined match sub matchers, I guess, because you can not only just run it on pull request, but you can have additional settings for the pull request when you know, it's whether whether it's a sign, whether it's from fork, whether it's an issue command, whether there's some members milestones, well, this is insane, by the way. So the amount of precision, all of that basically comes from the tight integration with the GitHub, which is quite cool. Uh, how do you combine? Um, I guess you can't really do that, which is a bit of a shame, but you know what? I mean, in our case, it doesn't really matter. Wait, right, what am I thinking? We don't really wanna deploy things from, um, from pull requests, right? So we only want to deploy from the master. Okay, so we're gonna deploy on push specifically only from master, then we got our jobs. This is going to be our deploy job, right? And it's gonna run on Ubuntu latest, which is perfectly fine. Uh, node version, we only need node 12. So we don't care about the others here. And then uh, we got our steps. So um, the way the steps works typically in CIs like Travis or circle or whatever, what you have is just steps that execute some sort of commands in preset environment. So you first say, okay, so we have a Node.js environment, which means you have like node npm yarn, and then you write commands like yarn install, yarn start, yarn test, whatever, right? So in this case, uh, steps have a bit more flexibility. You can say, okay, it uses actions checkout. In this case, this is all we want. So this actually is gonna use this actions checkout action, which is the github.com slash actions slash checkout, right? So there's actually a actual repo and there's an action and you can actually have a look at it and it basically describes what it does. And in this case, it just checks out the current repository, right? So this is exactly what we want. And uh, the cool thing is that you can write these actions yourself. All right, so then we use Node.js version uh, 12 right? And yes, so we only use our version 12, which is totally fine. Then we run npm install, which is, uh, I don't even, do we even need to run? No, we don't need to run npm install, right? So we have this, we just need to run npx exoframe minus u minus t token, and we need to add another thing. So um, deploy no, wait, so npm install, say deploy with exoframe, right? And what we need to do is to say, um, yeah, so we need to figure out how to give this token. And we also need to say that we need to deploy to um, our endpoint, right? So this is what we want. But before we go further, let me just zoom out a bit. Uh, we need to figure out where do you put the secrets? I guess this is the secret bit encrypted. So Let's see, um, managing blah, 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 concepts and expressions, um, is there secrets? Okay, job environments, steps and f you, you must, you must set secrets using the secrets context for more virtual environments, context and expression syntax. Okay, so let's try to figure out, so you can set, okay, so this is, you have to set the environment. Okay, so we can, we can say for this specific action, that it's going to have an environment that is going to have the exit token, right? There's going to be secrets exit token. Okay, now the next question is how do we actually specify it? Uh, let's see secrets creating and using secrets using encrypted variables settings secrets. Okay, so it's as easy as this, we just add the secret, we say exit token, 
And then I probably should call a terminal and do this off screen. Um, and let me see. So exoframe endpoints. Let me just see that I'm on a correct. Exo secret, uh, exo secret. So I need bxjs websites. It's no second. Um, come on. I forgot commands. I haven't used exoframe in a bit, and there is commands name create, read, list, or remove deployment secrets. Why not? Can I not access it? Okay, I mean, I can just create a new one, right? Exo secrets, so bxjs, GitHub actions deploy. Let's call it this way. And uh, yeah, I need to generate a secret, I guess. Right. Uh, let me think. So, no, wait, that's I'm, I'm using the wrong thing. That's not what I want, right? Uh, I want tokens. What am I doing? Right, there we go. I, I don't care about the secrets. I just need a deployment token, right? Uh, there we go. Exo token gets this is my token. No, not generating. God damn, I, I, again, I forgot my own commands. God. Generate list or remove. Okay, I guess like, I need to generate a new one. Right, I don't, I cannot get the tokens because they are one time generated. Okay, exo token. Yes, generate a new token. EXJS website deploy actions. Let's call it this way. And there's our site. So I'm going to do it off screen. As I said, I don't want to, I don't want you to see my uh, deployment tokens. That will be a really bad idea. So, okay. So did it copy it correctly? Yep. That looks good. Add secrets. Cool. So I have created another secret. Now I can see it. It exists. Uh, you cannot see it again. You can only remove it. Right. So we're all good. But we now have it there. So uh, theoretically, if I didn't screw anything up, once we create this commit, so start commits, um, add new GitHub actions workflow. Uh, workflow is what I want to say. And yeah, I'm just going to commit directly to the master. Uh, meanwhile, we should probably also go into the, let me think. So we don't need about this. We don't need this anymore. We need to go into the Travis and actually disable it, right? Because I want to run it twice and deploy the same thing again over and over. Um, let me think, where the hell did I have it? Was it on Travis? Like, this is one of the things that a bit annoys me with Travis because they have the Travis.org, which is the old domain and Travis.com, which is the new one. And you have like half of deployments on old one, the other half on new one. It is all not very nice to follow through basically. Okay, there we go. Uh, more options. And I just turned this stuff off, right? So let us commit new file. And theoretically, we should see the action over here. No workflow yet. Come on, I just committed it. Pick it up already. I think it would take a bit, you know, a few minutes or maybe seconds, I guess, to pick it up. They are defined there. What are you talking? There's the deploy workflow. Come on. I know you can pick it up. Right. Meanwhile, let me just uh, pull it here, I guess, and uh, remove the Travis CI file. Uh, Git up, so pull that, there we go. RM Travis, git status, git o, git commit, so some remove Travis CI config. Yes, yes, have my signature, git push. Okay, maybe the push will shake it up. This Sometimes it can be a bit slow, it seems, on picking up the new actions. There we go. Okay, and it actually already failed. <laughs> All right, deploy with exoframe. So what what exactly is failed? Uh, right, I'm an idiot. I failed on my own because yeah, right. So we don't actually have exoframe installed, right? So I tried to executing it without actually having it installed. And what I wanted to do is do MPX exoframe. And we got auto formatting kicking in, but that's fine. So let me do this and then fix it. Git commit minus M. Uh, I don't think we need the sidebar right now. So the problem was that uh, exoframe is not installed. So I either had to do npm install global or I can just use npx. This is exactly the reason why I added this minus e flag. Fix exoframe call in GitHub actions, right? Okay. Come on. 
do uh, do 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 resolving deltas pushing yeah okay so this this seems fine right uh, show us the actions right so it failed again than the previous time it seems like the other action seems to work perfectly fine right so the only problem is um this specific case where we where i actually screwed up in calling exoframe Okay, so we did that, we deployed, I mean, this is actually a lot easier than I expected it to be. Uh, and this is kind of awesome. The fact that they also give the templates is very nice. And the fact that you get the de very detailed logging when you do those actions is pretty damn cool. Okay, so we set up the Node.js, now we run the deployment. And can we please work this time? I think it should, should be working this time around. Uh, Unless again, I forgot something or screw something up, which might as well happen. So if this works, uh, what I would wanna do is, you know, since we're basically finished here with GitHub actions themselves, what I wanna do is I would want to actually uh, create our own action. So instead of running NPX exaframe, which, you know, I mean, this is not extremely complicated, right? But instead of running this, I would actually have us use the action and just say use action action i don't know exoframe deploy or whatever and just provide a token to it and the endpoint right because this is literally all we want to do now uh seems like the deployment is here running so the depending on my server and how it feels today is going to take from uh, anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes but it seems like it's working now one of the cool things of actions is that as i already mentioned you can actually have custom ones right so this is uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you can just say, okay, run some command as we did right now, which works perfectly fine. But when you want more flexibility, you can have custom actions. And the cool thing that there are come in three types. So um, uh, let me think. So I can actually delete this from here. I need to somehow delete it later on, but whatever. Uh, right, so we you can have three types of actions. Uh, the first type, and it seems like this is what the majority of uh, people go for. Um, I actually wanted to look here, still deploying, but whatever. So ma what majority of people go for is JavaScript actions, right? So if we take, um, so we don't need secrets anymore, GitHub common, if you go to actions uh, group, you will see like a ton of things here, including, you know, starter workflows, set up nodes, set up Python, JavaScript action and like there's a million of them. Like there's an NPM action, for example, and majority of those actions actually written in JavaScript because uh, the action SDK that they provide is JavaScript based, right? Now, the cool thing is that it's uh, the actions are not limited to JavaScript. Well, you know, it's kind of good for us because we're all the JavaScript faults here and that you can just, you know, use JavaScript and um, why is it taking so damn long? Because you can use JavaScript and just build your action. Uh, but if you don't like JavaScript or there's more complex use case that, you know, you want to do something on a limited resources because the CI, uh, that's another cool thing that I wanted to discuss uh, is that GitHub Actions are actually very generous in terms of resources. So that they give you a resources that is not something you typically see in the CI environments. Like, okay, the CPU is still, limited ish is just two cores but in terms of like ram and hard drive space like where was it wait a second let me try to find that again setting up about continuous integration there was a description of resource limits somewhere was it in configuring workflow resource um limits usage limits there we go so no that's a usage limits as in Okay, wait a second, where was this RAM? No, 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 okay. Um, cores, let's search for cores, JavaScript action, downloading using filter, and no, what? Uh, virtual environments, where were, oh yeah, there we go. Uh, so you got two cores CPU, which is already very generous. You got seven gigs of RAM, which is insane for the free CI environment. And you got 40 gigs of SSD disk space, which is also pretty mind blowing. And in addition, you get uh, four, no wait, five virtual environments where you can work, including Windows Server, Ubuntu, and Mac OS, including the um, Xcode and all the iPhone environments. So basically you can use the GitHub Actions to actually build your, um, 
Okay, it seems to have almost finished, but not quite. Why is it still spinning? You should be done, right? There we go. Okay, it works actually. Right, so as I was saying, you can build full on iOS projects right in the GitHub Actions without ever having a Mac, I guess. Like if you're working with something like React Native, you can now just publish your project straight from the Actions, which is uh, pretty mind blowing. But okay, uh, coming back. So we, yeah, as I said, you have an option to build JavaScript action, but you also can build a Docker container based action, which means that you can literally package anything in that container and it will be executed as an action with parameters, right? So they just pull the container, give it arguments and run it, which means that, well, you can literally do anything as long as it fits with the, you know, the resources, obviously two core CPU and seven gigs of RAM and 14 gigs of hard drive, you can do literally anything, which is absolutely mind blowing. So obviously, like, the interesting thing I found is that in the guides, um, like the, there was like, I think, was it here in the virtual environments as well? They somewhere had this like, you know, don't use GitHub actions for anything that has nothing to do with the project. So only project related work, because they are this flexible, because you literally can do just about anything with them, which is freaking insane. But again, in our case, we are gonna, so there's actually a pretty good guides, as you can see here on the GitHub and help section about how to create your own action. Uh, in our case, we're just gonna go ahead and create a JavaScript action um, with um, ExoFrame deployment. The cool case uh, for development of actions is that you, you don't actually have to publish it as a separate Git repo in the beginning, you can actually just point your config file to a folder, which is, uh, Pretty damn handy, to be honest. Um, I believe they had an example somewhere here. So there was, yes, there you go. So you can literally say use this and then point it to a folder within the current project, right? So in this case, the action they use in a, is in a root folder. So um, yeah, it's kind of handy for us because that means we can uh, rewrite this command execution into a proper action, right? So let's try to do that right now. I'm gonna create, actions folder here. And I'm going to create, I mean, I guess let's just start from the very beginning. So what do we actually need? So they create this. Uh, I guess you know what, uh, we, we can just take the GitHub. Do we need an NPM? We don't need an NPM action, right? So we just need E, I guess. Yeah. So what does this do? Who to greet input variables, action metadata prints hello, who to greet. Okay, so this is just literally output something we need to execute commands um, and install exaframe, which I mean, I guess in our case, we can just run NPX. Um, here's the question. I remember seeing GitHub action for NPX. There we go from Mikhail, right? And how did he do that? So if he just, is it literally just the, it's a Docker action and he literally just calls a shell script. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's, that's simple enough, but, in our case, okay, not quite that simple because he also adds the um, NPM authentication for the GitHub and for MGMGS if it is available, which is kind of cool. Uh, but for our case, let me think. So we could pull in exaframe CLI and then run it from code, which kind of should work. Wait a second, should it work? We got the exaframe command line, right? And uh, our entry points, let me just refresh my memory because it's been again, uh, quite a while since I've touched it. So our entry point is index, which requires source. Okay, source is just yards with a setup, right? We can actually just install exaframe as dependency require source commands deploy right, and call it in this way, basically the same way that I call it in tests, which uh, I don't know if that will work. Uh, I mean, it kind of should work, but I don't know if I like that approach because <laughs> this seems fragile as hell. As soon as I refactor the code, the action will stop working, right? So this sounds like a terrible idea. So let's maybe, let's maybe do, um, yeah, let's maybe just do a spawn process, right? So uh, we get, I guess we need to install the action score and actions GitHub. Let us do this, um, think. So clear this, npm install 
Yes, we need to save dev. So we would need another npm install step there because, right, that's a bad idea. So let's add it to actions and make, okay, let's call it deploy, right? Go in here, npm init minus y, just install npm install. So we need actions core and we need actions GitHub. And I also need not to forget to add the actions folder to uh, exaframe ignore because we don't really want to push that on our server, right? Because we don't really care much about that. All right, so we got this, we got the deploy uh, action now. Um, I guess we can create index.js here, right? And we can copy this thing and try to figure out what is going on with it. So what is happening here? Let's see, so we import the core, we import the GitHub, we get the name to grid in our case, we're gonna have two variables. So we're gonna get, um, we're gonna get the variable which is gonna be host name, right? So let's uh, call it, let's call it endpoint. Let's just be consistent because the exaframe calls it endpoint. So we're gonna have the endpoint and we're gonna have token, right? So we need a token as well. And we don't care about this core set outputs. What does this actually do core set outputs? Time 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 to string get the JSON payload context payloads. We don't care about these things. Uh, we can fail that is fine. So I guess um, we can say deploying to endpoint. We will not print the token. That sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> okay, so readme file. We don't care about that for now. Uh, we don't need to commit that now. Install site and okay, so they build it with ends. Oh, I mean, that's actually a pretty good idea. So instead of yeah, I mean, okay, I guess it works for publishing it, right? Because when you uh, pull it, you won't have to pull and do npm install dependencies which makes sense, but in our case, uh, I guess we would have to do this anyway, but yeah, okay, you know, well, let's roll, we'll just roll for it. So, or maybe, maybe, maybe let's just do this site NCC and compile it and publish the compiled version because why not? NPM install, save dev, uh, site NCC, right? Which means that we're gonna have, this is lock, this is package JSON. We're gonna have the build step, which is gonna say NCC build index.js, I believe. And we npm run build. It should result in dist index. There we go. Yep. Uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously there's a webpack compilation that is not something we actually want to read as a user, but that's totally fine. Okay. And I guess in our, yes, dist index. Okay, so we need to create action YAML. I guess this is the description file for GitHub Actions. Did they already discuss it? Did I just miss it somehow? Yes, I did. Okay, so we need this. And this is gonna be deploy with exaframe action, right? Uh, deploy your website, uh, deploy your, let's call it service with exaframe, right? And we had two inputs that we defined. One was endpoints description, endpoints, um, exaframe server endpoint, right? Require true default none. Uh, the next one is token, description, exaframe deployment token, right? Uh, deploy, come on. I can type sometimes, that is fine and required is also true. So we basically say, okay, we got two things, output time. Um, so in our case, oh, okay. So you can set, set out. Okay, so this is like specific output. Hmm, interesting. I guess you could output like deployment time, but it seems like the actions kind of log the timing themselves because it like measured the time it took to actually execute that. Uh, all right. <laughs> Time, I guess in our case runs node 12 main. So in our case, we say dist index.js, right? Because we compile it and outputs. I like, I guess in our case, we don't really need any output, right? Because we are not going to do that. 
and save this, save that. So in our case, what we want to do, can you actually use NPX programmatically? NPX programmatically. There was NPM. No, not NPM, NPX programmatic. It would be cool if you could like require NPX and then just say NPX run. I'm not sure that's a thing, but uh, samples invoking from a GitHub repo. Shell, shell auto fallback. Doesn't really seem so. Okay, let me just quickly check the source code because maybe we can actually do that. So main is index.js. Do you have an entry point? I mean, it's probably just using like spawn or something, right? But module exports NPX and does it auto run? Doesn't actually seem so. So maybe, maybe we can actually uh, even run that. But the question is, do we want to, or should I just use spawn? Because it seems like this is basically what NPX does with a bit more fancy stuff around, but we don't really care about that fancy stuff, right? So all we literally want to do is uh, just say, so we got the commands, which is in our case going to be NPX exoframe minus U minus endpoint is going to be endpoint and minus T is going to be token right so this is literally all we want to run i guess it would be just easier to do spawn commands um okay let me see Did npm actually npx actually use spawn or fs child they use the child here which i imagine is a custom module for child process okay spawn commands yeah okay i guess yeah let's just go with the child process too because why not and then we're gonna go child process. Um, why don't you auto suggest me stuff? No. Okay, you cannot auto suggest for some reason the spawn stuff. So this is the spawn to the document opts. Where are you taking the spawn from? Oh, there's the spawn. Okay, so they have a custom spawn command. Okay, which which is just wrapped in promise. And this is basically what we want, right? So child spawn uh, command arguments. All oh, right, because you cannot actually, okay, wait a second, Node.js child process is what we want, right? I completely forgot that you actually cannot just use the whole command. You have to separate the, um, you actually want exec or spawn. So exec will return std out std error and what's the difference with the spawn? I really don't remember to be honest, but uh, let us just have a look at the code. Uh, spawn methods, new process using given commands. And exec method spawns a shell and executes the command within that shell. Passes. Okay, so this is, I guess, kind of never pass and sanitized input. Blah, 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 blah. blah. So the other, I guess exec in our case is going to be okay. I don't know if we need spawn because it's more complex, right? Alpha, I guess maybe spawn is better because then we can set the environment to it. Uh, let me think. Yeah, so I guess let's go with a spawn because then we can more reliably catch the issues, right? So command in our case is gonna be MPX. Uh, I don't, probably don't need single quotes here. And arguments is going to be exoframe, right? It's minus u, my, uh, whoops, minus e, and then, um, yeah, this should be single quotes, minus e endpoint, and then minus t token, right? I don't think we need any options. What are these spawn command options? Uh, environment, doo -doo -doo, process end. Yeah, so I guess instead of setting token like this, we can say token and then say here end and say token is token, right? So this is gonna be, I guess, you know, is better than passing this string directly, at least. Mm, process end, e value pairs. Yeah, so we don't really care about the other environment. Current work directory is fine. Right, so this seems to be okay. Now we just need to um, 
is on SDDR. So we do this, we do this. I guess this is perfectly fine to copy, right? So we can just take this code. So we create, uh, let me just save that to all the format. We create an SDD out. If it has SDD out on data, we basically append it to the string. If it has SDDR on data, we append it. But would it not have it? Is that, is that even the case? So this returns a child process and a child process, I feel like it will always have, I guess maybe this is a compatibility thing for older node versions. So I, I mean, I guess, okay, let's just leave it here for the sake of it. Okay, so if it's an error, we need to um, rethrow it, right? Because then it will be caught with, um, with our try catch wrapper around here, we collapse this. So if it's if we rethrow it, it's going to be caught by this, and then we're going to set failed with error message, and then on close. Uh, if it's an error, if the code is non-zero, we create new error here, and we throw error, right? And otherwise we say that we are actually done. So we don't really care about this. So we only handle the error in this case, right? I think that should actually work. Okay, so we build the action. Um, let me think. We need to do npm run build. So this is gonna compile it using NCC into one file. Right, and this is the dist index that we describe in our action YAML, which describes the action, which should be fine. We got our token and endpoint. And now here, instead of um, doing that, so we don't, we no longer need to do npm install because we're pre-compiled the whole thing, right? So deploy with exaframe becomes uses, right? And it's gonna be, uh, okay, now I need path uses actions deploy right and this is what we want and how do i pass where's my uh, guide here how do i pass props to it so uses doo -doo 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 -doo, uses this and then you just with okay so we go with so this got to be with token right and endpoint in this case is gonna be uh, this right so this is Theoretically, this actually looks really sleek. So I should probably publish the official exaframe deployment action because then you can just do that, right? Which looks very damn nice. Okay, uh, save this, right. GitHub, uh, git add, okay. Let's see, yep, that looks good. Whoops, what, no. Let me just, uh, so we don't need to be here anymore. Let me just verify that I've actually committed or staged the correct stuff. Yeah, this is our compiled file that just have everything included and we no longer need to NPM install anything. It's very convenient again. It is very damn long because we have a lot of stuff. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, okay, but uh, package, yeah, that seems fine, okay. Git commit implement custom GitHub action or exaframe deployment. So if I didn't screw anything up as usual, um, this should actually work. And we should have our custom action deploy our BXS website using exaframe. So let us actually see if that works or if that blows up. Because if it does, we're gonna have to debug it and I have no idea how to do that. So it's gonna be a, yet another endeavor, I guess. Okay, they don't really have much more uh, describing what to do here, but I guess that's fine because it's really straightforward. So basically you you just have the GitHub uh, core to communicate with the uh, user input. And then you have GitHub, which we never used here actually, which I guess could be removed to make it smaller. Uh, what did I actually use it for here? Was it the messaging back? Wait a second, where's the file? Uh, core, no, core set output, right? Oh, they use the GitHub context payload. Okay, so they actually got the payload from the context. So you can actually kill that 
and simplify and reduce the size actually of the image, which is uh, something we want to do, I guess, right? npm run build. We can do that. Yep. Git commit, remove unused. I probably should also npm or ram it, right? Because we have it in the package JSON and we don't really use that. So we don't, in this case, we don't use any GitHub integration specifically. We just get the actions integration and that's it. So what is happening with our action? No, it's broken. Let's try to figure out why. Throw E. Uh, spawn NPX EO end. Spawn NPX path NPX spawn args. Um, spawn NP, uh, what is it? Did it not found? Does it mean the binary is not found, I think, right? Particular root cause, the problem is there. There is little information error message. I mean, I get it. Child process spawn, blah, blah, blah. Args, yeah, 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 yeah. Command, so wait, uh, I think EON error means that File not found, right? Yep, okay. So it cannot spawn npx because it is not in its, wait, 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 wait. Oh no, my VSL is acting up again. Okay, we will not remove that. I'll just, I'll just do this, you know? I'll just uh, remove it manually because my um, VSL is acting up and I don't want to sort in the middle of the stream. That will be unfortunate. Now, why do you not uh, find npx? Here's a good question. Like we did npx before, right? For sure, because we set up the node.js and does it actually tell where it sets it up? Run actions, da, 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 set up. Okay, you know what? Let's have a look at the setup node action. So basically we need to figure out where the npx lives because npm install, npm test. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So we did that. Publish and so you can provide environments, you can provide registry. This is some very convenient stuff here. Okay, how can I spawn npx programmatically? Here's the question. Installer, um, ta -da 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 -dum. temp directory, base locations, temp. It is depending on the platform, get nodes, toolpath. Does it inject something into the environment? Oh wait, is it because I override the environment? Wait a second, Those process, right? So what if, what if? Okay, let's let's try doing, what it actually, wait a second, does it actually output what I was running? No, it doesn't. Uh, although if I would have my token here, yeah, it would actually output it. So let's try expanding process env. Um, okay, uh, remove GitHub, um, was it GitHub core, I think, right? And no, actions GitHub. How did we, how did, what was that package? Actions, yeah, actions GitHub. GitHub package and um, add full and info to spawn command. Okay, Let's see. So the only problem that's basically left to solve is why does it not see npx? Uh, I mean, I guess we could just run uh, which npx, right? Or type npx to see, was it, is it type npx? I always forget, yes. We can just run type npx to actually see the full path and maybe use the full path because it's almost always gonna be the same. But it's a bit weird that it's not automatically picked up when it should be, right? But uh, as you can see, the writing actions is a lot easier than, at least than I thought, to be honest. <laughs> like the SDK is pretty nice. The whole setup is a lot easier. Fly with extra frame, okay, it failed again. And we got the same error again. So I guess we are running, yeah, run. Okay, so do, 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 token. Yeah, so we got the token, which is our secret, which is perfectly fine. It's actually quite nice that it automatically stars the secrets and does not allow to show them in here. Okay, so why do you not, uh, why do you not find npx? Hey, okay, wait a second, is that a common thing, spawn npx? 
Tableau does not work with npm run scripts. Yes, this is exactly basically what happens, right? Uh, you enter our codes every in until you can find npm and path. We are expanding env now, which is totally fine. Uh, command npm untouch, right? This is the window. So this is the Windows worker. We're not running on Windows, right? This is like Ubuntu, if I remember correctly. Let's check out. Yeah, okay, check out Home Runner. Okay, so this is definitely not Windows. <laughs> okay, um, why would it not find it? Let's try debugging, I guess, uh, with a way. Find NPX, right, uh, run. Which I guess type NPX would be fine. Try um, try finding npx via script, right? Let's call it this way. Yep, come on. Okay. How can, is there another way of doing it? I guess maybe exec would be better. Child process, okay. Node child process on versus exec. I remember reading somewhere a long time ago was the difference, but hell if I remember it after word. So spawn returns a stream, exec returns a buffer. That's the difference that we don't really care much about, right? Uh, spawn is asynchronously asynchronous, exec returns the whole buffer. So exec basically waits for the whole thing to finish. What this happens in terms of environment? Uh, Let's see, we got a new action execution, which failed again, right? So we got to find NPX. So we got this opt hosted tool cache. Okay, so it is there at least an environment when you run it from the shell. So I guess let's, I mean, theoretically both exec and spawn should behave in the same manner, right? But let's, let's try running exec, I guess. And uh, let me see, so node, uh, node exec, uh, child process, let's see, exec. So it also goes command options, but in this case, right, in this case, you can actually run the whole command here and options also takes environment. So we can just say MPM, yeah, so we can just do that, right? So the pretty much the same way we did before. Okay, so we give the command, we give the environment, we pass the token. Default environment is process env, which is fine. So we expand it, we give the token as additional thing. Shell is defaults to the current shell, I believe. Bin shell, okay. Timeouts, uh, okay, let's see if, but the thing is that it's not gonna work this way, right? It's gonna be completely different. So exec error, yeah, so this is what's gonna happen, right? So we exec it and you pass the callback to it. And instead of doing things, so if there is an error, we throw error, right? So this is first thing to do. If the code is not zero, we need to throw the different error, right? So, I guess we don't actually know code in this case. So exec error, error, yes, yes, yes. Error, no, there's, it doesn't actually. Okay, you can promiseify it. We don't really care about that. Exec file, this is not what we want. I guess this is literally all we want, right? So if there's an error, we just throw it. Otherwise we're fine, okay. Um, yeah, let me also remove the try find npx because now we know that npx exists in there for sure and the problem is just in the environment of the execution. It's, oh right, I also, npm run builds. I need to rebuild it, right? This is one thing that I'm forgetting. Commit replace spawn with exec. I mean, I guess majority of time you would actually write actions properly with the proper code instead of just invoking something 
command line, right? So you would not have problems like this, which maybe is a reason to just wrap this whole thing up here and go and write the proper exaframe deployment script because that will be a lot easier. And uh, yeah, I guess actually requiring the exaframe CLI and um, executing deploy manually would work a lot better than this. But uh, you know what, let's try to finish it anyway. So in theory, that's once we are done with this, come on, please tell me you can find it this time around. By the way, the other actions are really damn fast. It's maybe easier to make, actually make the exaframe deploy action uh, run from Docker because I have the, ex wait a second, I know, right, that's right. I have the exaframe, I don't actually need that stuff, right? Because I have the exaframe binaries. I can actually just pull the binary and run it without Node.js. I don't even need Node.js. I can just pull this exaframe Linux binary and run it there. There we go. Okay, here's the question. Where's my logging? Yes, it doesn't actually shows any logs if uh, if everything goes well, which is okay. I guess I guess you have to output logs yourself. So let's see. Um, that is. Let me just decrease the size a bit. Bxjs dev. God damn it, it is okay. It just SSH into my demo server. Oops. Um, grab bxjs, there we go. And no, this is the bots. Wait a second, where is the, where's my website? Xjs website, oh, it is now called bx minus js, okay. <laughs> For some reason, it is now bx minus js. Right, 18 seconds ago, oh, I think it, it finished. There we go, it actually works, hey, cool. And we did it and it works. And it seems to be actually a lot. Yeah, so I guess the spawn didn't pass all the environment that you get from the shell, which means it couldn't find the NPX, which means it failed. But now that I'm thinking, and now that I'm looking at the binaries that I have for Exaframe, I'm thinking that, you know, I can just do this as a Linux, uh, sorry, the Docker container, Docker image, which is gonna be like 20 times easier because I don't even need to install Node, I just pull, tiny Docker image with this Linux binary and it works, which is probably gonna be a lot faster. But yeah, um, this is basically it for the GitHub Actions. So if you guys have any questions or suggestions, as usual, throw them into the chat right now. If you are watching the VOD on YouTube, add them to the um, comments. If you are in the mood to talk a bit more about all this stuff, join our Discord server. We'll be more than happy to chat. Seems like no more questions or suggestions from the chat. So thank you guys very much for watching and I see you next time. Bye.